Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie's at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and this next match, Capricious vs. Clone on Lonely Oasis. Well, let's start. I mean, Clone hasn't played in a while. I'm actually kind of excited to see what they're up to, so they're going to go for Cloakie, as is Capricious. Both players going for Cloakie on a map which I would personally go for Spiders on, but hey, this is actually a pretty flexible map, I think. I'm not sure if it... It doesn't support vehicles. That I wouldn't go for. What is going on? Ugh, great. I don't know. Sorry, I don't know why... I, that happened both games, where I, like, I at some point just randomly jumps over to the to player one. I don't know. That's really weird. Anyhow. Oh, wait. Sorry, I'm just thinking. Anyhow, with Clone going for... Okay, so Clone historically has been a relatively defensive player. I mean, it's one of the things I always pointed out when they were playing more regularly, is they tend to not let things die if they can. As best as possible, they try to avoid units dying. It's a big part of their playstyle. Whereas Capricious, on the other hand, I don't really find they're particularly defensive or offensive, but they are going for four sides today. That is their main strategy. Going to be trying to be sneaky. But yeah, Capricious is just generally relatively solid. They don't really, I find, try to keep units alive especially, but also aren't the most suicidal. It's kind of... isn't quite as distinctive as Clone. Like, with Clone, I have seen them serve... I've seen them keep units alive in the weirdest of situations, so... Yeah, it's it's a thing that Clone does. But then again, Clone's also kind of rusty, so I'm curious how that will actually work out. If Clone's going to be able to do that as effectively as they normally are able to. And it looks like, yeah, they're still definitely going for the defense. They're still trying to... Right now, clearly, you can see, they're trying to bait out Capricious. And make sure that their Glade doesn't die. I mean, Clone's much more concerned about keeping their units alive than killing their opponent's units. Or has historically been, at least. And in this case, that's actually going to pay off, possibly, because Clone... Oh! That one glaive! That one glaive it should not be up front! It should not even be in that army, or that small group. Ah, Clone losing one of their glaives. Actually, Capricious is able to take out possibly two? Yeah, it takes out two glaives for the price of one, so Clone doesn't quite manage. And they tried their best, we did see that, but didn't quite manage to keep those glaives alive. And another set of glaives coming in from Capricious, so that is going to be another problem for Clone. Right now, Clone going for relatively, I think... Econo well, relatively speaking, at this point, not really relatively economic. Both players will have it, but Capricious is going for an extremely aggressive build. They only have one Conjurer. They're going for, I mean, all of their Glaives are done. Their sides are now getting started. Caretaker up as well. Looks like it's not quite in range to reclaim. It's supposed to be, but it's, I don't think, quite in range. Nope, not quite. Green Circle. And it's able to get one tree. But I think it's probably just there to help out building all these economic structures, maybe? That's an interesting place to put it. I've never... You see that occasionally if there's reclaim fields, but not often. Unless Capricious' plan is to get another factory on this side, and then that would be where you'd have the Caretaker. It's close enough to deal with the Glokibot factory. There's no problem with it being there. It's just usually they tend to be closer to the factories. I'm really curious. That's actually something I don't see a whole lot of. I mean, I see it occasionally, but it's not something I see often enough that I've found a pattern or found that it's necessarily the best strategy. Anyway, Clone still trying to deal with Capricious' annoying forces. While Capricious has actually been expanding quite a lot, Clone did take a bit of damage here and is having to rebuild, obviously. But Capricious forcing stuff back. This is going pretty well for Capricious. I mean, they have a 10 metal per second advantage. They have... Decent amount of map control. They're basically getting Clone to try to chase them and keeping Clone on their toes. I mean, at this point, Capricious just running around everywhere. Clone doesn't really know where to put their army at this point. Clone does have the radar, obviously. And they can sort of see what's going on. But not very well. Actually, not anymore because the radar's just been destroyed. Well done, Capricious, I guess. That was kind of what you needed to do. Get rid of the radar, and after that, Clone will have very little vision. So at this point, Capricious just building up more islands, building up more metal extractors. That's all they really need to do. Trying to get in harassment where they can. Taking out Glaze where they can, too. All in Clone's territory, so Clone can at this point reclaim their way back somewhat into the game, and they are rebuilding these metal extractors, building more metal extractors as well, so Clone's not that far behind. They were behind, but it's turning around. However, sides coming in. One of the sides does get revealed. Takes care of quite a few Glaze in the process, though. 250... Okay, that was actually 
not quite making cost. One more glaive that Scythe would have made cost. Very close, though. I think it was... Actually, hang on. 65 times 4. No, actually, no, that made cost. Yeah, that just barely made cost with 4. The lower cost, actually. So, yeah, that was that was pretty well done. Yeah, it's like 260 metal was killed for a 250 metal unit. But the Glaze rushing in here, and one Lotus is up, another Lotus not quite. Clone, are they going to retreat? No, they're just gonna, trying to go for getting away from that Lotus, dealing all the damage they can. And that should be enough to get rid of a couple Metal Extractors. Metal Extractor and... The Glaive... Wow, okay, apparently that's a thing Glaives can do now, is just walk off the edge of there, walk off the cliff. Fell off the cliff and is no longer useful. Unless, of course, a, a crane or, or a wasp at this point, because a gunship plant. Or, heck, even a mariner comes in and just terraforms up the ground. <laughs> and Capricious' Glaives is double-checking. Well, that Glaive's down there. It's, it's underwater. It's not going to bother anyone anymore. I almost, feel, I almost feel bad for it, but I'm not sure why Capricious is leaving those Glaives there to gawk. They should probably go and fight. You know, Clone still has army around here. They still have units. I should have an upgraded commander. Beam laser. Wow, classic beam laser commander. Really, that's classic. Most of the time I find people are going for riot cannons or occasionally machine guns. Beam laser isn't quite as popular of a thing ever since the dynamic commander system came in and you didn't need to have the generally effective beam laser. Because beam laser is an effective weapon. It's just that it's a generally effective weapon. Like, there are a lot of other weapons that are situationally more effective, but you can't go for them when you have to pre-make your commanders, but when it's dynamic, you can. So Beam Laser's been a lot less popular as a result. It's still good, it's just people have been going for more directly situational approaches. Like they see the factory and they go for something that deals with it more directly, whereas Beam Laser, that's the, that's the safe choice. That's the generally useful choice. It's just not great when a lot of units with a high power, with really high firepower and moderate to high health come at you. Actually, even low to moderate health come at you. Glaives can be a pain in the butt if they're too close. And these glaives remain gawking over to the north. They're just, they're just watching the other one sit there, or stand there, I guess. What is Capricious focusing on? Oops. Now they're focusing on the front lines. And it looks like they just control Z at all their glaives. Pulling them all in. There we go. Get them all back. Because those gawkers, they were just... They were stuck there. I don't know what they were doing. They weren't doing anything. But it doesn't matter. That's what Control Z's for. And a Dante coming in eight minutes into the game. Capricious thinking that 35 metal is enough to go for a Dante against a 20 metal opponent. Mind you, Capricious doesn't actually know what Clone's current economic power is. They can guess. But, yeah, this is... This is a little surprising. I mean, not for the economy. 30 metal is definitely enough to build a Dante. It's just that... Oh, well, it, okay, it's sort of enough. It's kind of risky. But still. At this point, Capricious just going for the Zeus is going for... Well, not quite sure what they're going for the Zeus is, actually. That doesn't make sense. There's a lot of Rockos here. The Rockos just deal with Zeus, no problem. And the Glaives deal with the Rockos, and the Rapiers deal with the Glaives. And at this point... Gremlins would probably deal with rapiers. But I don't think that's the idea. Zeus, I think, is okay against rapiers, but not great. Like, if Zeus gets the drop on rapiers... No, Zeus sucks against rapiers. I can't see how Zeus would work well against rapiers. It could stun them out, yeah. But how would it get the drop on rapiers? And they're so slow already. Like, if the rapiers position themselves poorly, the Zeus can get a shot off. But Zeus' range isn't that big. Like it, and yeah, those rapiers are not. They're just tearing apart Zeus's. That's the thing. Clone has a perfect anti-Zeus army. Everything they have is all about getting rid of Zeus, or getting rid of assault units in general. This is a perfect anti-assault army, and with the rapiers there, that means glaives can't easily rush in and deal with all of these rockos because the glaives would love to, but the rapiers tear the glaives to shreds. Other than that, I think yeah, gremlins a good idea. Hmm, I almost would say go to a different factory. <laughs> Like, go to air or gunships yourself, get a bunch of tridents and deal with this. 
However, yeah, the Dante is still on the way. That's still something to point out. Dante's on the way. Despite the fact that all his forces are coming in from Clon and now kind of being chased away, this is just a preamble. The Dante coming in here, Clon should be aware of this. Or are they? They're aware of something. They were something that started moving from this island over here. They don't know necessarily that it's from there, but I do see it now. They do see the Dante coming in. Hammer also trying to help out with the defenses, but the Dante does not care. The Dante cares not for your defenses. The Dante just burns. It's what it does. It sees you and it burns you. And all that's left of you is a pile of ash. So yeah, that's that's what's happening there. That's pleasant as it sounds. Why is Capricious going for a Razor? Are they expecting Banshees? Are they expecting... What are they expecting? The Rapiers won't go down to the... To the... Oh, Razor! I'm thinking Stardust. What am I thinking? Yes, Razor is a good idea. Get rid of the... Or stop the Rapiers from coming in, then use a bunch of Glaives to deal with all these Rockos. Good idea. Why did I think that was a Stardust? Apparently my brain is not working today. That's not a Stardust. If it was a Stardust, then yeah, I'd be completely confused. But it is, in fact, a Razor, which is a very good idea. It's the... It is the best choice against a bunch of Raiders. Even against Banshees is not terrible, but I would go for... I'd go for Stardust against Banshees. But against Ra Rapiers, Rapiers are the thing we're dealing with. Razors are the option. Now Dante continuing along its swath of fire-filled destruction, while at the same time Clone going for a bit of a backdoor attack. Yeah, there it goes. There's Rapiers going along the back, while Glaive's coming in through the relatively undefended front, and there are a couple... Well, there's a Warrior, another one coming up. The Rapiers won't be deterred by them, though. Unfortunately, Capricious has no anti-air defenses, and this Glaive basically is the only thing left. There's a bunch of anti-air around the Glaive to make sure Rapiers can't deal with the Glaive trivially. But there's also the Sharpshooter, or the Spectre, right? Spectre now. There's also the Spectre now, which can't shoot through the trees, apparently. Cannot get a clear th shot through the forest. Well, clear enough there. But that's the thing. Capricious right now, which is pushing forward. And the Rapier's coming in along the back, too. Getting rid of more of Capricious' energy. More of Capricious's construction. I mean, the build power going down. Capricious going for a fusion plant. Well, now's not the best time. Unfortunately for the Rapiers, the Warriors are not horrible against them if the Warriors get in range. The Rapiers have to be careful about their strafing. But at the same time, the Dante is still pushing in hard. But one more sharpshooter... No, two more sharpshooter shots. And that Dante is dead. And the Rapiers... Might be able to actually deal with this. I mean, they are getting rid of the warriors relatively efficiently. It's like three shots to get rid of a warrior. Maybe four? No, it's four shots to get rid of a warrior. So, oh, never mind. It's five. Okay. Doesn't matter, though. They get slowed down. The warriors get slowed down. That's the important thing. There's no defenses. That's the even more important thing. The Cloakie Bot Factory is very close to death. The Caretaker's down, too. So that's even less production time. Capricious... Also just lost the Dante. I mean, it was kind of a foregone conclusion with the sharpshooters and everything. The Spectre is just tearing it apart. Dante's down. Cloakybot Factory's down. Everything's down. Clone, nice assault in the back. That was a very effective rapier assault there. And there's going to be a backup factory probably. But I don't know. Maybe it's just a backup Dante. The Strider Hub is the backup factory. Capricious does not have an economic disadvantage. They are still ahead economically. That's probably not going to last, though. Clone has the army advantage. They're retaking territory. They're taking a lot of metal extractors. There's a sharpshooter as well, for, so additional Dantes are only going to go so far. And who knows what will happen out of the gunship plant. Probably nothing, but still. Capricious has no other factories. They've lost their main base. They don't have a lot of units nearby to rebuild the main base. Trying to get rid of these rapiers. And that's actually the only rapier left. This is the only rapier on the field, and it's about to go down too. But Clone's also about to go into Capricious's old main base or just stake out the entire area. I mean, this is, I think, bot pathable. Yeah, this is bot pathable. So there is a path that's not involving these Rockos that could go to the main base, that could allow for rebuild. But I think Capricious's best bet right now is focusing on this area right here. And where's their commander? Ah, I see. Their commander building up a sneaky shield bot factory over to the southeast. There we go. That's the thing to do. I mean, Capricious. They're starting to lose their economic advantage, but hey, sneaky attack. One sneaky attack deserves another. At least that's in Capricious's mind at the moment. That's Capricious's idea. Build up a bunch of caretakers and then use the rest of that metal. Needs more energy, but use the rest of that metal to just power out a shieldbot factory. 
And that will probably... Probably be a last hurrah. I don't expect it to be a huge amount of damage. To do a huge amount of good. I'm a bit surprised that there's no... Shoot, what would you even use? Like, there's no dirt bags or anything. I mean, from the Shieldbot Factory, a bunch of dirt bags coming out there to try to smoke out that sharpshooter. Or this Spectre. I keep calling it that. Trying to smoke out the Spectre would probably be the best idea. Figure out where the heck that thing is. And, oh, hey, never mind. The Dante actually figured it out. Found it by chance with a D-Gun. And... Oh, doesn't quite work out. I mean, it did... Ah, it got locked in. The Dante's locked into the ground. There is going to need to be some leveling going on in order to get that out. But the Sharpshooter is also dead. Another... Or the Spectre, rather. I'm calling it that. Spectre's almost dead. Spectre is dead. Dante's nowhere near dead. This area needs to be leveled out, and there's nothing coming along here to deal with it. Capricious, Capricious's commander is on the way, though. There is help. It's on the way. And the Rocco's... What are they going to do? I mean, at this point, Capricious has clearly shown that they're going to be fairly resilient here. Clone does have the economic advantage now. They've taken it. And there's a Dante turret. Just due to that one worker. Otherwise, once that Dante gets back up, Clone's not got a whole lot in the base. They have a lot of Roccos. They have a lot of stuff outside the base. And I think Clone might be trying to go for a backup strategy themselves. Trying to build up another factory. Or at least make sure that they can if they have to. And Zeus getting too close to the Rapiers. I mean, this is the thing. Rapiers do well against Zeus unless they get close and stunned out. And the Dante freed from his prison right in time, too. Right as Clone's forces come in, blowing up Capricious' commander. Capricious' commander giving its life to get the Dante going. And that will probably allow Capricious to take this, or at least really cripple Clone. And if Clone gets crippled down, then that's going to be enough to probably just finish this, I think, actually. Yeah, I think that this will probably do the trick, because once Clone goes down, Clone doesn't have... I mean, they have the commander. They, they do have a backup factory plan over to the north. I mean, we basically have a base trade going on here. That's what's happening. But I think at this point with Capricious, with the Dante, I mean, they do have the better firepower. But the problem, of course, is Rocco's do deal with Striders pretty effectively, and that Dante only has a 1,000 health left. It's like five shots before it dies. And the Dante about to go down. That Rapier, one more shot, and it's done. Wow. Capricious is not going to throw in the towel. And there is another Dante coming in. One more Dante. Capricious doesn't want to give up. But Clone just barely saves their base. I mean, if that Rapier had died, if the Dante had managed to hit that Rapier enough to kill it before that one missile, the Dante would have wiped out this entire base, and that would probably be game. Clone does have a backup plan over to the north of the Light Vehicle Factory, but that was still huge. And yeah, pointing out that it might still be game, even if... Orphelius is pointing out in chat, it might still have been game if these caretakers had died. If the Dante had killed the caretakers before dying itself. Fair point. That actually would have helped a lot. But I don't know how much it would have helped. Clone would have just made it even more of a light vehicle factory game at this point. And Capricious continuing to attack, trying to finish off, I think, or... No, they're trying to set up a reserve force, that's the thing. Bit of harassment over to the north. Trying to do some damage, but overall... The bandits are kind of getting torn to shreds. More coming along here, trying to just do what they can. A defender line coming in from Clone, making sure the bandits cannot do more than they have to. And that should not be all that effective. I mean, really, the bandits are coming in here. There's no other defenses other than another defender. And that other defender might kill another bandit, maybe, if it doesn't spread his fire. No, it... Oh, it does, yeah. It does kill another bandit, but all these workers are dying. And the Rapier helps, but unlike with Glaives, Rapiers do not one-shot bandits. They do one-shot Glaives. They exactly one-shot Glaives. They deal 200 damage a shot. That works for Cloaky Bot. That does not work for Shield Bot. So bandits are actually a bit more effective. I wouldn't use them against Rapiers, though. I would I would go for something else. Like, I would obviously go for probably Vandals would be the most likely choice. That is the anti-air. I wouldn't go for the bandits, though. I'm not sure what I'd go for. I mean, Felons might... No. Felons would be a terrible idea. I mean, they'd hit, but they'd be a terrible idea. They'd just lose all their shields. And the Dante is done. Capricious not even paying attention to the Dante. Not at all. This Dante is just sitting there. And Clone double-checking to make sure Capricious had nothing. And no, everything is still a burnt-out husk. Bunch of ruins, that's it. There is actually a convict coming in here to try to rebuild. Bad timing on Capricious's part. Clone 
I mean, this convict has been traveling the entire length of the map to get here, and it got stuffed. That is tragic. I feel bad for that convict. I mean, there's... There is a dramatic Oscar-winning movie there with that convict. A convict story of just walking across this entire island, this lonely island, or oasis rather, getting all the way to his destination and getting unceremoniously burned to a crisp. Brings tears to my eyes. Anyway, tragedies aside, we do apparently still have a game. I mean, neither player is quite calling it in, and Clone, however, with the economic advantage, pretty huge one too, 20 metal per second, and has had it for a little while now. Capricious, on the other hand, really focused on attacking here. I mean, the one convict did try to get over to the northeast side of the map, did try to rebuild, and I think Clone is... Now I know, they're moving in. They're taking the base. And Capricious, of course, they wanted to take Clone's base too, but they didn't manage to with Dante. And the next Dante is still in the base. Capricious has... Like, They've got 3,500 metal just sitting there, idle. I don't know why it's not moving. Anyway, with that, sheesh, clone, bit of a stalemate situation, and we do see a felon. Of all things, I actually did not expect a felon to be pulled in here, but apparently, yeah, Capricious did go for the felon, which I did say that wasn't going to work. I mean, runs out of shields on, like, one of them, on one of the rapiers, and that's it. Against the Glaze is not a terrible idea, but now... Now it's coming in. Clones trying to close this out. Sending in the Scorcher, sending in all the Glaives. I mean, there's not a whole lot to deal with ra Raiders here. No real Riot units. And for Shieldbot Factory, what do you have? Felons? Yeah, that's about it. Gonna do their best. Which is gonna be relatively good, but there's not a whole lot of shields left. It's not a whole lot of shield power between this army here. I mean, Felon Thug Ball is definitely the way to go with this, but there isn't a whole lot to work with. And Outlaws are the other option, of course, for the supplementary riot damage. At this point, though, Capricious is just losing a lot. I think they might actually realize they have a Dante. I don't know what they're going to do with it, though. That Dante is basically done. There's nothing Capricious can do with it that's not going to involve it just going out and getting itself killed. I mean, the Scorchers would kill it. Scorchers kill everything. If you get close to something, it's dead. I mean, we've seen a lot of times Scorchers just wipe out commanders. They're going to do that to the Dante, too. And yeah, Capricious throwing in the towel... I feel kind of bad that Dante didn't manage to do anything. That probably would have helped a lot. I mean, another Dante, after Clone had taken all that damage, might have actually done it. It might have actually given Capricious all the momentum they needed to get a proper base trade going on, and then pull in with another living Dante into Clone's new base, deal with Clone, and win the game. But Clone took it back. I mean, that was really cool, though. Nice base, nice base swap there. Nice, just hidden base to save yourself. Very, I appreciate that tenacity. It's very impressive, Capricious. Okay, I'm really pointing out that Dante also makes everything die next to it. Good point. Good point, because Dante has the exact same weapon as Scorchers. But even then, there's going to be a lot of Scorchers. And they're all going to be around him. Yeah, I guess. I was a fool. They all have heat beams. Anyhow. Bit of excess, but not too bad. We did see... Mostly, it was, like, energy was a bit weird, but overall, energy was pretty okay. Yeah. I don't know. I like to look at the excess metal, because that's usually a pretty good sign of how intensely the players are paying attention to stuff going on rather than the economy to the game. Wow, yeah, you can see first damage here drops up, and then another one. Is, I think these are Dante's, actually. I think both of these drops are Dante's dying for Capricious. And this is where Capricious wiped out Clone's base, or just about wiped it out. Yeah, and then Clone spikes the metal after getting that Dante gotten rid of. So anyway, that was that. That was really exciting. I, had, I enjoyed watching that. Good game. And on a map I like too. Wow, Capricious had a massive economic advantage right up until the end. And then Clone just went all the way back. Okay, granted, that's metal. That's accumulated. But still, even on the metal income, even on the second-by-second second metal income, Capricious still had a massive advantage until about the midway point. This is around the time that Clone was going for, well, defending against that one Dante that nearly wiped out the base. Whew. Cool game. Anyhow, that is going to be... Oh yeah, Ophelia's pointing out the... I keep saying Ophelia's pointing it out. Ophelia's is in the chat. They're talking. It's, it's a stream. It's a live stream. That's how this works. People will talk to me. And then I respond. But I'd like to give credit where it's due. And yeah. That's true. The Dante... 
The Dante did push all the rapiers into Capricious's base, which wiped out Capricious's base completely. Like Capricious had no anti-air, did not expect Clone to go for a counterattack, and that was a big problem. That was a huge problem, actually. Capricious was basically trying to claw their way back into the game. They were lucky that they had a nice defensive position in the center of the map that was actually able to keep sending attacks in. But that wasn't really enough. Anyhow, that was that. So the next game, last game, is going to be a bit less of an all-star game. Magman versus Nemor. So not a terrible game. I mean, these are both... Nemor apparently is much more of a team player. Haven't seen them play 1v1. Magman is relatively even between the two. That'll be on Titan Duel, and it'll be up in just a moment. So stay tuned.